Thank you for inviting me. Hello, my name is Igor Lebedev. I'm the technical director of the SON project. We are doing a decentralized system for fog computing. So, decentralized, yes. Then they probably would not have told about blockchain. Uh, there was a centralized one. The centralized system of fog calculations. If in short, this system allows people to list a computer that is mining lines a home computer or an excess of calculations in data centers to lease and um, other people around these computers. There are similar projects, but they have a different architecture. Currently, the system is decentralized and uh, in a stacked form, we do not have our service. And all calculations and management of the system take place on the basis of smart contracts. Here in short, what we do. Accordingly, we started production on Saturday and now we are accepting the first users. But today I came to tell you a little bit another about another topic, about how we do sidechain. We will have two reports. Anton will tell you about sidechain and I'll tell you a little bit about another topic, about gates. And how it can be done at all, how to organize the world, what are the options, pros and counters. The topic is not easy, so I'll start with this. Blockchain is easy, blockchain is convenient, fun, easy, reliable. Yes? You all know this. There are a lot of developers in the hall who... It was sarcasm general. Yes, okay, blockchain is convenient. Well, there are developers here. Yes? It's expensive, slow and comfortable. It's not obvious. It's bugging badly. You cannot change it. You can deploy smart contracts and goodbye. This goal. What is the goals and tasks? The goal is to make the system decentralized and there are certain benefits in this. These benefits are due to the fact that a decentralized system that does not work on our service, it has great confidence, it is more transparent. If it is accompanied by another open source, then people can thread this system as something public therefore. Well, also, purely organizationally, we have no need to have a number of legal, now about a number of legal nuances. If the system we do not operate, if we do only open source code, this, then in general, we are just a software developer company which does it of its own free will. And in order to start a normal system in commercial operation, we need a certain throughput. And this is what is now very difficult to achieve with blockchain. For example, we conducted the SEO and deployed our ERC20 tokens on the master chain of Ether. Suppose, which, which as you all know holds about 20 transactions per second, suppose if we are talking about the project load and some, I will allow 100,000 transactions there. And the average transaction duration per hour, that means about there without overhead, a thousand transactions allow about a thousand transactions per second. Well, there is a plus minus, then we will understand that on the master chain of, the, of Ether, it will not even start at all. And there really are questions, how to launch it. Blockchain, yes. Listen, let me tell you what I've wanted and then I'll answer your questions, okay? Just if you build, guide me, then... Yes, let's do it. Well, if it's straight out the narrative text and you ask, then I'll just you at the end, okay? Good. Please not be offended. Under transactions, I mean some sort of different actions. There are transactions in blockchain, there are more hell designs. Let's say we have deals and so on. A deal is when we pull the handle of a smart contract. This can be accompanied by several physical transaction blockchain. Let's first install the law, then call smart contracts, but like at the business level, it's like a single transaction. And keep in mind the transaction business under transactions. That is, in blockchain there will be even more in down. Nazale, this is, we would like to launch the project for real. I don't know how many people do this in this blockchain industry, but we are trying to make a real system, so we are resting on the other performance. And it was already almost a year ago that it became clear that the mass chain of other would not even be dragging it all. Because 20 transactions per second does not go anywhere. And now for such projects as we have a question, how to do it at all? This is technology like, like this, the technology is cool, but as if it's work not to use. And there are different approaches. You can use, separate your own blockchain run, you can sit on the master chain, anything. Suppose if you sit on NAM, on a new one, where there are several thousand transactions per second, but still it seems that it still is not enough. 
for, for the industry load. Therefore, we have chosen a solution with, with a sidechain for a number of reasons about which Anton will continue to speak and tell us today. Sidechain is essentially a blockchain which keeps us in touch with master chain, and similar architecture is generally promoted and recommended within the framework of a plasma. And Polkadot makes a similar thing, and in general, it seems that separate sidechain around some central change. It's kind of like the recommended architecture. And here, there is a question how to synchronize with each other. I actually slow you the picture right now. Here we have the main master chain of Ether, and we have our own sidechain where we have all the business logic running around. It works quite smoothly because it works in proof of authority mode while on our servers. In the future it will be centralized. Now it's decentralized simply on our servers and there is currently holding up to a thousand transactions per second general what we need. But our main token deployed on Ether, which is being used for calculation of resources. Here it is. All business logic takes place here and we need to deliver this token to the sidechain. Again, Tom will tell what other alternatives we have considered, but here we have an architectural node called Gates. This company that looks at two blockchains, both in master chain and in side chain, and which acts as a transaction validator between the chains. And how this gets organized, the question is really not trivial. In general, if we talk about the organization of our own and there is nothing really, if we take Sorry, there is nothing. So we looked at Polkadot, we looked at Pol Network, but Polkadot is not ready yet. Pol Network for a number of reasons does not suit us. Again, this is a separate question why. Therefore, we make our own sidechain. In the gates, what tasks do they face? By and large, we don't have a task to keep our sidechain in some way synchronized with the master chain of the other. There is no such task. The main thing is to ensure the transaction of tokens between these. Therefore, we envisaged such an architecture. I'll tell you about it briefly. There is must chain of Ether. There is some token a person has has wallet. A person wants to transfer a token to a side chain owner in order to buy or sell resources. He makes transaction of the smart contract and there his address is used to on the master of the a master chain of the Ether. Since the address of the Ether is something that will be same in any chain of the other, our goal is to give these tokens to the same address, but in another sidechain. Accordingly, as it happens, tokens fall into the smart contracts, then some trusted software, in this case as a gate, they monitor the events in the workshop, and upon receipt of the event that the token arrived, they unlock the same number of tokens on the sidechain and are sent to cite the same address as the person was. As a result, there is a magic that a person had a token here, a token appeared here. Accordingly, the same smart contract for the token will be deployed here and will simply mirror. In the opposite direction, it works exactly the same. When the person has already earned at least for the resources of a token, he wants to withdraw them. He uses a wallet on this side, he wins the, them on Again, smart contracts is all automated in one button. Accordingly, the event occurs in sidechain, the gate tracks it, they get unlocked the same number of tokens in master chain, send it to the vendor's address. Those tokens go between the chains and for a number of reasons it's convenient and acceptable for us. Now the question arises, how to organize these gates? And as I said, canonical architecture is not here, even if it's ready to take something. Here we have considered a number of solutions, I'll show them to you. Here they are. What did we consider? Well, let's see we have Pol Network. Pol Network is a cool thing. It allows you to make transfers between different authorities based on authorization. Who are these authorizations? In the case of Pol Network, uh, they release the authorizations. There are people who are notaries in the United States. It's some kind of serious validation of person and someone who is a notary in the US get the right to play a note and drive tokens between the teams. Here everything depends on what we trust them or not, and why these people should decide for our detachment. Another option is Polkadot, which we are considering. Then we had Pol Network with Polkadot. How do they do it? They will allocate a pool of validators, which by voting write different chains of hashes of blocks from another chain. So what's the problem? If we got the to the side chain and something we will declare, for example, I can't I can do the side chain and say I translated the talking on the master chain, give them to me please here. I don't have the ability to cryptographically prove this in sidechain because there is no connection between um, this what happens to the master chain. What does Polkadot do? They are at least at planes. They want each chains to have hashes of blocks from the other chains and this has been confirmed. 
and furthermore, it's possible to present Merkelized evidence. Merkel 3 from the hash of the block, the transaction you need. And accordingly, the pool of validators has organized their work in the proof of stake mode. They synchronize the hashes of the blocks with the necessary frequency between chains. And then I, as a client, make money. Let's admit the master chain in the smart contract. The synchronization times go by. I come to the side chain and I place the Merkle 3 and tokens are given to me because it's cryptographically proved. But this decision has not yet been implemented. It's still only in the planes. There is still a wonderful thing such as atomic swaps. In general, this will be the perfect solution for us if between the chains we would simply drive atomic swaps with tokens because it does not require it at all. Firstly, it's absolutely reliable. Secondly, it does not require any kind of here. It's most important cryptographic reliable. But the downside of the solution is that it is not balanced. For example, if you have 10 million tokens after an advertising campaign and so on, but at the same time there are only a million tokens for the release, then we get an unbalanced situation. The entrance is 10 million, the output is 1 million. Atomic swamps means an equal flow in both directions. Economically, a million with a million to be matched, and reliably and surely will go in the right direction as the Bitcoin changes. But there are 9 million to enter and leave no one in terms of they cannot pass, that's why atomic swaps for the test of gates is not suitable for us. It could be used as an auxiliary solution, but since it alone cannot completely solve the problem, it rests no other solutions. If you make another decision, you cannot do atomic swaps. There is uh, one more solution, which actually we have now filled. This centralized gate is simply, that is now what I are uh, our gates. This a voting ring of scripts. Proof of authority, several gates is full turned mode. It just trusts the software on any unknown service in a safe mode launched which simply monitor one chain, validate it and lower the tokens in another chain. Just trusted software is one current solution, but this is not what we would like to do. We want to decentralize it, give it to the community because to maintain the server with security, well, it costs money and it carries some risks. So this is not the final solution. Approximately, here are the options we have today. It's Paul Network, Polkadot, the white paper idea, there is an atomic swap, and it seems there are no other solutions. But in general, there are a lot of projects on the coin market cap. Somewhere there are thousands and every day new ones come out. It's physically impossible to keep track of everything, but from what comes to my eyes, oops, sorry, the laptop turns off. From what came across the eyes of other solutions, it seems is not on site, but the same, but the cam, yes, please. Well, let's just say so, yes. It's not that in the hard demand, it's just that we are comfortable with other smart contracts with EVM. We have already written down business logic on them, we have a market profile there, but it's really convenient. In comparison with pressing other chains, there is running, that is, for all the youth of the technology of blockchain, at least other is something already in the world of blockchain, it is enterprise, so it's convenient for us. And how we could use NEM, Waves, something else, we would have had to learn from scratch, from there and uh, there to full smart contracts on other it's convenient here but if somewhere on another detachment let's say of eos where today really guaranteed to work and test it we could seriously consider it but it but i personally did not understand it to the end is all this a funny story or is it something serious this is until the end is not clear here on white paper everything is beautiful, but so far what will be realized still need to look will be. Therefore, there is so no strict requirement, but it's desirable. Uh, so we come in general to the main issue which I wanted to talk about. In general, the topic of the speech was how to organize voting, and in all these uh, schemes we have some kind of voting. In the case of the Paul network, we vote with authorization. In the case of Polkadot, we are voting with a stick in order to synchronize the hashes between the uh, between the chains. In the case of atomic swamps, there is no such thing. In our current case, we are also have vote. What is the complexity of voting with respect to the transfer of tokens? Transfer of tokens is an operation that takes place at the level of smart contracts and EVM and accordingly you also need to vote on the level of smart contract. In the case of master chain, it's simply expensive for guests. If we want to make good reliable votes with a representative number of voters, say from 50 to 100 to 100, some nodes vote, and uh, the organization of this vote will simply cost of a lot of money. And the current moment on Ether is just an ERC20 token. The translation costs about half a, half a dollar. 
then if you run a vote of 50 nodes on the issue of a single transaction, it will be easy. Well, it will be funny. This will not work. Therefore, we cannot afford a full vote for each transaction. We could collect transactions in the block and vote for the block immediately. Assuming we are going to enter 100 transactions, we package them in a block and vote for a hash from this block. Then they vote. And then people come with the Merkle 3 again with the confirmation and withdraw the money. And in general, so you can do. But in this case, there is a problem of voting. Which one? In order for the vote to be representative, there should immediately be a lot of tokens loaded. If we have a proof of stake of some kind, not with the mining of blocks, but it should be a large representative sampling of the owners of the tokens. If we let their vote 1% of tokens, then the possibility of such a system will be quite cheap. So he went and bought 1% from the market and as it were voted badly, this undermined the credibility of the project, the course fell for everyone else. Therefore, any schemes for uh, voting in addition to being expensive for guests, they also require a large number of tokens in the moment of time also in work. And when the system is just starting, we do not have a lot of transactions, from which it will be possible to feed the gates and take commissions from them, because all these schemes, they require economic motivation. And so we find ourselves in a situation like that there is a proof of stake, like we could have vote for stakes. But we cannot economically induce in small volumes where to get enough money. And if we do not get enough money there and encourage people, it will work simply unrepresentative and unreliable. Okay, therefore there is one more scheme, the actual subject of my report. There is such a project Ogur. They make false networks, predictive networks. A person can have some kind of event, let's say the victory of a football team in a particular match. Other people can trade for this event, and when the event takes place, the leaders can in a vote for the outcome of this event. They certainly want to make sure that the system is reliable. To do this, you need to vote a representative number of participants so that is reinforced. But if all the participants of Okur, all holders token will vote for all the events, they will not take off ever. So they came up with the Everlegan scheme, which I answered it from them a year ago and which I recently recorded. This scheme with escalation. Look, let's say we have some kind of voting pool of people. We can make sure that for each routine voting operation and they can make a decision with at least one voice and this greatly facilitates the task as a functional one. It is not necessary for everyone to do everything and this is much cheaper, but in this case one participant may try to deceive this system. For this case an escalation procedure is introduced or a claim procedure. How this is done in a guru? Maybe there is something changing in a year, but I read this white paper a year ago. The validators vote for the outcome of the event. They vote in general with a small amount and further in general, if no one has changed it during the allotted time window, there seems to be a month given to it. Then it's considered that the event is voted correctly. But if someone thinks from other validators that the event was voted wrong, someone out there is unhappy with this event, he can open a claim and change this decision and then the rest of the stackers come running to this complaint. They will spend time to vote with a large number of people with the whole crowd and how it will be more resource intensive operation, but it will be clear at whose expense it will be paid. It will be paid for by the one who incorrectly voted before the escalation. Currently, more people are running in the vote and make new decisions they can challenge. More people can still go there in this vote and vote for the other side. That is, in the end, it can escalate and grow up to the battle of all these days they are on this platform. And uh, what is interesting in this scheme, and in this, this does not have to happen every day. It simply hangs like a thread and therefore it encourages participants to act wisely. Such a scheme would see us for gates. I remember it and tried to apply it to our system. Here it is marked in this column how this could work. Let's say there is a gate that drives tokens between the sidechain and master chain. If we introduce that we will have a certain set of stake, we can vote. We will somehow register their right to do this and give them the opportunity to go there at any time. Then we can make sure that each of them has a pledge and each staker among these gates can, with a solution of one node, unlock the tokens on the target chain. It can act as the sole validator. 
Then the person has started talking on the master chain, we give it a side chain. And it will be cheap, reliable, and most importantly, it will allow us to launch into the system without reading a large number of tokens in a moment of time. Because if necessary, in case of some conflict, they can jump sharply if there is an opportunity for someone to punish. How would people not like to start master nodes and keep them constantly, because a small amount of money can be earned? But if there is a, an incident and the system during which time is given to run there, and will earn a lot of on it money at the expense of the stake of those who behaved incorrectly, it seems it will be a motivation that will deter these actions. We came up with this scheme for gates, scheme with escalation. There are stakes. Voting for the output of tokens occurs in one voice. If necessary, they monitor each other gates. If some gate thinks that the other gate has mod an unauthorized operation, if it is broken or it wants to steal money or something it is, it is not at all, it simply opens up an escalation to it and it happens autom automatically. Other gates run and vote automatically. If the total number of gates and their stakes is not enough in the system, they can run from the exchange to withdraw tokens, call in additional people and vote this escalation up to all tokens in the system, up to full authorization. And it seems this solution looks reliable. And the sense that it is not necessarily in daily activities, but if necessary, is like a thread that hangs and can work. I want to tell you about this, such a small survey and excursion of possible voting systems. So, let's go a little further on the details. Covering the systems, what we did, did we pay attention to? Of course, this an accusatory difficulty in the measurement of gas. And we are talking of centralized gates, as we have done now. The cost of gas is only transfer tokens of version 20. This is from 20 to 70,000, depending on number of parameters. And we are talking on this scheme with Pol network, and we have a voting pool, a certain number of validators. The more validators, the more gas is needed for each operation. But we can collect them in blocks, and therefore, and we have the number of letters comparable to the number of blocks, then general, approximately. One transaction per output will cost approximately as one voting operation. Similarly, in the scheme for this bulk dot, the consumption rate is the same. We can also pack them into blocks, we also need to vote with the whole crowd, but if the number of transactions in the block is large, it will level out the number of voters and reduce the cost. In case we do, but atomic uh, swaps centrally all is much more expensive it turns out, because there are several operations and cryptography is involved in records, most importantly. In the case of the scheme as uh, in Agor, this escalation, we get a fairly cheap scheme because we withdraw money in one voice. It's just one ERC20 token transfer. Well, plus two recording operations, which actually and become more expensive. Well, but also here the, the schemes consider we need to pay some rewards. For example, for atomic swaps or for our current scheme, we don't need to pay a fee. In all other voting schemes, we need to pay a commission. Well, as if, as if this is a plus the, that encourages us to choose a scheme with escalation, is that we do not need to start a full stake voting right away just for the daily operation of the system simply because we do not have enough commission for them at the start. Approximately this picture is obtained by Gates. Are there any questions on this part? So uh, if you have any questions let's go into the microphone so that you can also hear in the background. Who's first? Thank you. Is there not a cheap attack on this scheme of escalation? Cheap attack on this scheme of escalation. So to start it as an avalanche it's quite cheap there are to initiate it. It's a vulnerability, in my opinion. In order to start an attack with escalation, you must first be a gate with a full fledged attack. We are now determined that this will be 100,000 tokens. This is quite a lot. And if you begin to escalate, you must be ready that if you lose it, and if you are wrong, you will most likely lose, because most are reasonable, and you will not only lose money uh, in the amount of the disputed amount, but you will also incur costs for all these here operations and overhead up to full stack. Roughly speaking, there is no sense in starting it if you are not sure a complete victory, but surely you can only be if you control enough tokens up to half of them. Well, that's about the way it should work. I have a question. But in Augur, in the system Augur escalation, 
Is it possible, or if some research is prevented, that is not the beginning on the attack with escalation, but can I use this system? So as not to let the system work. If no one draws. The problem wording in the block chain, I think the main thing is that people are hammered. He how the DAO two years ago as Charlie how it rains, the people do not want to do anything with their tokens, they keep them on the exchange and do not react. Can I be like that in the system with escalation just to sort out any action and those paralyzed network there for months? So you can try to do this. Here are the thing you on the specific rules that we have this, but the general scheme is, is as it follows. In order to do something at all, generally to be admitted to some decisions, including potentially harmful ones, you need to start your own stake first. So I was for storage, and later during this stake you can do some crazy stuff. Cunningly the stake there is quite substantial. As soon as you first challenge someone, this is at the beginning, at the start of the escalation, until it becomes avalanche-like. This happens automatically. If some gate contested another gate, all other gates on it are aggravated, run it and vote. If everything is in order, if they are not broken, they will vote by majority for correct decisions. To vote in escalation or in ordinary life? In the escalation. To receive as a reward the stake of, of the one who loses, it's a way to waste his budget. And if the commission there is uh, relatively small, then it's possible for a single furry to get quite a lot. But the way the Polkadot is well described in white paper, uh, there is it say that there are master nodes, well, not the master nodes, but validators which the commission received little by little, and there are still some who watch over the votes. They do not have permanent board, but they have a chance to constantly give a shit to, to normal. And so it seems that greed is the most reliable de deterrent. Everything that is based on greed is reliable, yes. So it's greed, uh, greed and fear, uh, this is reliable. The Reasonableness of the majority, in fact, I think doesn't exist. They are not the economic interest of the majority. Yes, see, what, what calculation? There are a large number of token owners. We proceed from the assumption that as long as most owners of tokens, 51 or more percent of tokens owners, act within them rational and motivate their own within, the, within their framework of saying they're saving the system will work. They will deploy some numbers of gates which will be proportional to the number of turnover commission will present in the system and if it's all different people who are trying to simply earn, these gates will work. This default and so far settings. They automatically start any escalation that begin. But that's like a big escalation with the establishment of additional money with the withdrawal from the stock exchanges. It's all there. The wall to the wall, it will only rise if there is an escalation, some gate question the other and uh, one of these sides, one both of these sides, a large number of gates, as is not how that there is one who is not right and everything is against it, but there is already there is uncertainty and there is a lot of money, then there must open windows of time. If everything this work stops for an hour, there for a day, so that people can enter a big stake and vote for those whom they think is right. If in this scheme the majority of voices, this complete collection is this battle of all these stakes are won by those who are generally wrong, then we can draw a number of conclusions. Firstly, after this, the credibility of the project and in fact the rate of the token and those who is done. They just lose their money because everything just collapses. And after that, it's generally incomprehensible. You can make a hardcore, you cannot say that the token no longer exists because it's unclear what happened to the owners, but this incomprehensible scheme is going on here, but it should not reach it. Because it keeps on motivation to save your savings. If it happens, yes, you can say, well, um, there are further and definite consequences, but if this happens in general after that, the developers will do the hard core, but we will probably make hard fork in the case simply. And let's say, mm, so you can stand this chain on which you want. Sit there further and do what you want with the Stadium Classic, let's say. Do it faster than you want, but the right chain will now be such if this happens, because it's obvious that they continue to work for for you in such a system, where right they escalated to something wrong, it seems this will be further wrong. At least from the exchange, such tokens cannot be started. He will remain in that version of the sidechain, which they want. 
After that, we are just like the developers. So, versions that will have 100, but we turn out this version. We start rolling out, roughly rolling out new side chain. We suggest that everyone who wants to update their customers, that the majority of the people updates everything and goes there. But here you see the, the word fork is speaking in its classical sense, as it was with the DAO, the, the Ethereum classic, there was only one smoke. Here, as if it's more blurry. Under the fork, we mean that we just take some snapshot of the block at some time before this event, roll back to it, change the boot node, change all the nodes, issue a new version, change all the nodes, release a new version of the software, this updated addresses boot node, and so on. And we say, guys, here a community, we have a decentralized system, you are free to make a choice, you can stay on the wrong side, where the wrong side born. If you do not agree here, you can download the updated client and which everything is pumped it back. Accountably, those people who did this, they lose money like that. Escalation in automatic mode. Uh, this is soft gates. We have not done this yet. This is still the current project. This will work, of course, in automatic mode because no one at the monitor will see to control it will not. It should work quickly, automatically and mechanically. Cruel and miracles. No, so there will be a default version of the software gate. All reasonable people, those people who downloaded it and not modified by miraculous intentions, just launch with their stake. It will work on the right. It will monitor the master and sidechain. It will skip the correct transaction, and if the transaction is incorrect. It will incur an escalation against the transaction, and so they will do everything it will do. And modified customers cannot be on different sides of the escalation. And modify cannot. Thank you. Well, it turns out in this system, hypothetically, the possibility of its hacking is, but for this you will have to buy most of the tokens from the market. As if in the first place your purchase rate will be overestimated, then on the outcome the events you will lose their value and it doesn't seem so, no sense. And you can without causing escalation, but in order to cause escalation it is necessary to pull the handle of the smart contract and for this, this needs to be one of the participants and this volume is stake and entered. It cannot be done by anyone. I can sacrifice some small stake for the sake of breaking everything. But the question is, you have enough open and what does it mean to break everything? You cannot break everything. You can start a stake and then you can make a run your section. If you are not sure that you can support the, that erroneous action by most system tokens, then most likely you will be irretrievably irredeemable and simply love how cool it all turned out. But only on the coins become sound is not mining. Well, yes, you can still mine with coins. There will be immediately be got some sly ar arbitrators who will try to mine. Well, we produce from the fact that they are somehow in the moment can that's it. If you do, uh, then you can say, I'm spending this stake here, so that you just hammer the net. But in order to hammer the network, if you want to spend 100,000 tokens, which is now about 20,000, then you block up a block, one transaction, then you do not block this block. You just now if you invest here, so if you invest in here, you, you stake, let's say, 100,000 tokens for Twenty thousand dollars. If you dispute someone, you can challenge it for the same same amount in proportion to your stake. You can challenge something in the system. There's the same amount of someone to challenge you. They quickly kick off all the gates and all. And how do you st stake went to that order? Thank you for attention. Everyone is happy with it. After that, we'll release a press release for the class. A reliable system has turned out, and everyone is generally happy with each other with dispersed through the homes. But if you ask about the DOS and how to spread the system, but not in this way, expensive that is. Or if they could ask how we do on the side bash with gas, or how we go there with the DOS. How, if such a question we asked, we would say something else to you. And totally will tell you about this part of this story. But to uh, DDoS, and here is the escalation and quite simply different things as a microscope got the nails 
Я прошу прощения, можно пожалуйста? That when someone launches a blockchain client, after all, he somehow finds he here have downloaded the he somehow connects to the right other, not to some classic uh, there, not not the Bitcoin and he connects to the very other Ethereum. So that's some sort of centralization of the national network load, right? This is a terrible secret, but at the heart of any blockchain are the bootstraps. Which sound where on the centralized service line. In order to find uh, the entire P2P site, you must please connect to someone. Clear, thank you. The second question. Do you have a node on each node? Or I allowed nodes with a chain? Without a chain? If we're talking about outside chain, we have uh, full nodes. We are actually mined. You just said that you do not have money. We do not have money, you see, when we talk about all these systems, there are many layers different. Here's Son as a project, it does not mining. Son is like the initial you see 20 token, but when we talk about outside chain, the process of assembling block is traditionally called mining. Let me paraphrase, we have the process of assembling blocks on the side, people, for short, it is also called mining. Here is a small one. Assembly your blocks, but he does not uh, bear any words while nothing is uh, imitated in general happens for free without motivation We just keep in our service just for the sake of everyone's good and in the future and the post will be made on other We simply wiggle the system to the some post that will be made from the other You said that you can vote against only if you have a proportional size stake What happens that the stake is very large Nobody will be able to vote against him. People can. Look, if someone with a very large stake does something very bad, then all the rest are normal. They have a total stake and suffice to crush it. But even if this is not enough, if there are still these rules, trifles still need to be, th to be thought. But it seems that the scheme will be like this. As if a large number of tokens has collapsed, there's just a window for any in the escalation it will expand and it will be enough to run into even more people with normal private money, it's private tokens and they outweigh the miracle of the scales. But general that I get scheme inside that should work in automatic mode. More questions? In general the blockchain is convenient, as you all mentioned, you know. Convenient, fast, reliable, transparent. No, well, in fact it's really a technology that was previously unavailable. So, um, you know, Turing completes a uh, Turing full smart contract based on blockchain. Um, the concept of making a complete decentralized system it was basically absent until the appearance of the theme Ethereum. Um, there seems to be some good that will just continue to develop for a long time now. Let's see what Platinum does, see if Fork is made. And it just where the technology is very early. Maybe there will be something from a tendency thesis of EOS projects. So, I so unsuccessfully asked the first question about the blocks. Your opinion, blocks, blocking, or blockchain, does it outlive itself? She goes into some, is it blockchain? Is it blocking the, on the blockchain at state level? In the sense that the structure of the block, uh, it goes into the past. How much does the future have? And does it, you mean transaction layout block? Yes. Well. See how there is technology block graph. Well, so the blockchain is not the only technology general creating, storing this data in a replicate mode. There is a block of graphs. Other projects have started their ramified boxes, but it seems that the block as a way of packing it is rational and reasonable. It's like chunks in the database, it's quite normal. What is what is his problem? And they think that there are blocks. The problem is that there is the bandwidth of the disk subsystem that is capable of storing it. Yes, you can do some habits, for example, we can make more small blocks or make smaller ones, but large blocks. In fact, everything depends on the performance in the time of the machine and the size of disks. What, what size block 
you oh. can write one by one, but you see, if you're talking about transaction, the transaction carries only a payload, it carries its data there, who to whom, what, there is a signature in this case, but a block, it carries a certain overhead, like a TCP IP packet, and so on. Чем больше блоков. There are certain overhead costs because there is a hash of previous block in block and there are additional data in the block, data time and so on. Therefore, in fact, the larger the block, the better it seems because then in terms of one, more blocks, bigger the block. Size of the block, well, let's see, I'm not saying it's good, but I'm saying that from the point of view of overhead, the larger the block, the more one counts for one transaction, how much less overhead costs are born. If we read a block, uh, does the cost of creating a block affect the optimal size? But it seems that the performance problem in blockchain is not solved in the question field and block size. It should be solved by parallelization. It must be either plasma shards or somehow that's like this. Block the block hash rule goes like, okay, well, the hash is a hash. Okay, well, uh, let's say, then hash block goes like, okay. Is this categorical or do you have any option to not include the hash block in the case search for a K? So, is it possible to search for a block not by its hash or some variance of such blockchain? Well, look, if you are talking about the fact that you have somewhere, somewhere a database with some uh, archival information, you organize storage and block searching need, then you can, then depending on how you index it. If you index by Turkey, then you can search for them as you like. But if we're talking about blockchain itself as an informational, informational structure, it seems that there is a unique hash of the block and it characterizes the block in general and can act as its identifier and information sets. Yes, I mean that this is not a definitive condition. Not a categorical condition, but it seems that quite optimal and here this part seems to be no do not dispute, but discuss. No, 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 no. This is like discussing question to make souls red, or they can be any color anyway, exactly. For some reason, everything isn't red, but, but it's possible, and yes. But the way, the question of searching for a blockchain is very interesting. There's to the question, does block is clean, and if you allow smart contract to be made in which you store database, for example, a stock exchange based on smart contract, and if you want to search for something from some depths there, then you are faced is a problem. Then you know, there is a smart contract you need to lock the Thank indexes you. and functionality and the SQL database because you have a permissible map in unstructured, you need to do some indexing there and so on. And it will be insanely expensive and not effective. I'm sorry, not right at all. Thank you. For one simple reason, I'm like a man. You obviously you are not on my report here in any number. I told you how the database is being built inside blockchain. And as a blockchain and database is an addict mix that works. I understand what I'm talking about, and it works cheaply. And this index is actually cheap because you're sitting on the data provider as a block. In block, there are only rules of transmission and coordination. You have an unpacked stake, and it already in indices are made. Unpacked stake. Done. No, I understand what you're talking about. No, I, I did not talk about it. I'm talking about the fact that you write some software in EVM and Solidity on smart contracts. If you have an object there, you make some kind of million size map there. It's expensive, don't think about it. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the state DB. Okay. I'm sorry. I just look at all these, these beautiful pictures, unfortunately, not them. And so. Do you somehow cancel the beauty of these pictures? A little bit, yes. My point is that, in general, atomic swaps, in my opinion, is the only thing that will work the following there are not many years. Looking at what cases, no. Well, no matter how. You, you're the atomic, you're as atomic swaps maximalist. Yes, okay, you know, I still know people who are atomic swaps maximalist. Are there a lot of them, you know? There is also like network maximalist. It's well, yes. Yes, it can. So, Atomic Swaps is good, but I just said about him and about it and uh, that it does not solve the, all the problems, not all the problems. If I have an unbalanced flow of money, I cannot break it, these Atomic Swaps, unfortunately. Look, if you have one on one task, yes, if you have task being aware of it and you can do this too, just for this you need to use specialized solution. 
Rather than hopping the four tongue swords, there are between ready made components. If you have to write little code in C in a large volume, I mean, where does this C code and how is C related to atomic swaps? If atomic swaps is a concept, atomic swaps, yes, but not implementation. Where there are the implementation of atomic swaps, it will not disrupt non equilibrium situation. Although I'll write it on Rabi, at least in C, there on something. You need to conceptually understand that not equal volumes change. It mathematically there. No, look, there you can. If you agree on this side, you can agree. So, do you have another question? So, okay, one question. Since such topic has gone, general, what do you think of Tasha technology as hash graph? You were talking about block graph, about the speed of blockchain. Initially, said that you're using Ether. Well, I don't know. I immediately had a few questions. Why Ether? Why, for example, not EOS? Which speed is faster? EOS? EOS, for example. Or why, since we're talking about the blog graph, this is actually the question. Are you familiar with this such a technology as hash graph? Listen, I recently watched literally the other day in some hash graph.io. I don't know, maybe this is it? Yes, this is it. But look, let's. Mm -mm. Now you have asked a lot, but other, you know how to not be delighted with the many moments of the other, you know, the other reminds me of Windows 98 and those times, well, yes, it is enjoy time, all, sh all it can use, all software for it, e this is a very tested system, in the market there is specialist who knows how to service Windows 98, well, you took the broadcast only because he had a large community and a large number of developers and it was convenient for you, not only that, about the other, you can't say anything, in fact, in the world of blockchain, this only industry solution. It was started months ago and even then the world that he started is very questionable. And those promises which it look it took itself, namely the sharding this whole performance scalable. I do not rule out that this will be done, but you understand when we need to run the project in mid 2018, you should use the type of ready made solution. As if EOS is not really a solution but this is, is all this beautiful white paper. On that arc, everything works, and all these EOS have all the, all these here, uh, thesis EOS. They somehow on their uh, other press, and so anything can be said about him, about it. But uh, it worked today, not tomorrow. Therefore, we use it. As for the hash graph or the blog graph or all these things, so the ideas are correct, and did they completely agree? Like an idea. So they will do this. Who and when it will really be supported in the industrial mode, and how it will be running, and how it will be supported by the community? Because there are a lot of projects. Let's say here iOS and other uh, killers other. Uh, they're scalable. They are full of theory, but in practice, no one else did anything for some reason. And all the blockchain, they are all monolithic blockchain. We are nothing better than other. Well, the other at least works. Let's wait when it works. Sasha. I have one question, I swear to you, I will not develop the topic. I have a good question. Uh, you cheated on the performance hash? I you so cool about it? I said I just read the white paper that you look cool. I have not even seriously considered it. Simply, well, look, the guys are singing and doing tons of people like right. Guys, do it. You know, something that seems good. Be engaged. Build silly. It's just a strange instead when they say the hash count. Well, just if you understand, on the one hand, the guys are going something pr productive for the blockchain, and on the other hand, there are a lot of sorts of scammers out there. It seems that the guys at least move in a useful direction. Let's see what they will do. Okay. All right, friends. Uh, I think uh, they can do applaud to Igor for a very detailed report.